Now, testosterone greatly affects the amount of muscle that you start with. Like I said, it greatly affects your starting level of muscle mass. That's why we see men on average having more muscle mass than females. But the thing is, it has minimal impact on relative hypertrophy. Remember, hypertrophy refers to the muscle that you build. Um, and what we're referring to it as today is the muscle that you build with resistance training. Right? So when it comes to your muscle building potential via resistance training, testosterone seems to have a very minimal impact on that. So a majority of studies comparing the hypertrophic response between men and women report very similar changes in hypertrophy outcomes. And I've got a graph that sh will show this on the next slide. And what this means is that females have a very similar muscle building potential to males. Now, I don't think the jury on this is completely out yet because there is a lack of direct uh, robust evidence. But what we can do is we can extrapolate from various studies and create a hypothesis, okay? Relative strength and muscle gains are very similar, if not identical between males and females. But the absolute gains, there's a difference here. There is difference between relative gains and absolute gains. Absolute gains, which means the raw amount of muscle that will be built, will always be higher in males due to their higher baseline. Not always, but on, on average. But the relative amount of muscle that can be built is very similar. Okay. Now, all of this is primarily based on untrained individuals. Okay. So people who are very sensitive to resistance training, who can build muscle quite well. Okay. And we're not sure how this works in the long run. So I can't clearly and confidently say that females can build just as much uh, muscle as males in, in the long term because there is no evidence that allows me to say that. What I'm doing right now is I'm extrapolating from various different studies, various different areas of, of our knowledge, bringing that together, but there are limitations, okay? This is all based on untrained individuals, and like I said, we, we, there is a lack of direct evidence, okay? We can't make much from just one study that says relative gains in hypertrophy are very similar, okay? Remember, all studies come with limitations, and we can make some inferences, but we just can't come to these very hard conclusions. So in saying all that, um, you know, a 2014 study of elite athletes in a variety of sports found that women had, women had about 85% as much lean body mass as men. Okay, so they can gain a lot of muscle. It's a misconception that females can't gain that much muscle. They definitely can. And testosterone doesn't seem to contribute to that process to a great degree, okay? Or it might, but people generally think that testosterone is, is why men build so much muscle. But that's not exactly the case. There are other reasons. Now, here is that graph I was speaking about. So, as you can see, we've got men in blue, we've got women in orange there, and as we see the differences in weekly increases in direct measures of muscle size, we identify only slight differences. Okay, in some cases, pretty much equal. Okay, so we definitely have some outlying data points where males you know, gain considerably more muscle than females do. Um, and in some cases, females gain slightly more muscle than men. But on average, it's quite similar. Okay, so this is based on quite a few studies there. And this graph is thanks to Greg Knuckles from Stronger Bioscience, who put together this um, review, this analysis on many studies. But this is not a legitimate uh, analysis. Okay, it hasn't been published in peer-reviewed re research, uh, but Greg Knuckles did a great job with this. So, now we're going to step away from those gender differences for... Um, a little bit of time and we're going to talk about just hormones and hypertrophy in general. So like I've said in previous slides, variations in circulating testosterone may not impact resistance training induced hypertrophy to a great degree. 
Okay, we know how hypertrophy occurs. When we are in positive protein balance, when muscle protein synthesis exceeds muscle protein breakdown over time, and that protein turnover is positive, we start seeing the accumulation of growth of larger myofibrils. We're acquiring hypertrophy. There is also satellite cell proliferation. So resistance training increases satellite cell proliferation, which means these satellite cells that sit in the muscle fibers, they, they're quite dormant. They don't do much until they're called upon. They proliferate, so they break up and they shoot into the muscle fiber. They recover damaged areas and thus differentiate into the fiber. They increase the myonuclear domain of the fiber, which means that they donate their nucleus. So all these satellite cells, they have a nucleus which they donate to the multinucleated muscle fiber, which can actually potentiate the process of hypertrophy because it's a nucleus that contains the DNA, the genetic code, to code for proteins and thus build muscle. So the more nuclei you have in a muscle, the better. So it's not all about testosterone. Now, there is some research that shows local intramuscular androgen receptor content is closely related to hypertrophic response and lean body mass. This is interesting. Okay, so remember I said testosterone binds to androgen receptor. Anabolic hormones in general bind to an androgen receptor. Now, hormone concentration is not the only piece of this puzzle. Receptors are super important too, because if there's no receptor available on the membrane of a cell, it doesn't matter how much circulating hormone you have, it's never going to get into the cell, right? It's never actually going to exert its effects. It can get into the cell, okay? If there's no receptors in the cell, it's got nothing to bind to. So nothing actually happens. Cellular activity doesn't change. So the more androgen receptors you have, so the, re the density of androgen receptors within a specific tissue can influence hypertrophy to a great degree. And there's various studies that show a correlation between androgen receptor content locally uh, in a specific muscle and the size of that muscle and its potential to experience hypertrophy. And this may be one of the reasons why females can grow a considerable amount of muscle, potentially a very similar amount of muscle to males. They may not have as much circulating testosterone as males do, but they may have a larger amount of um, androgen receptor density in specific muscle tissue. So they may have more receptor content, which means that even though there is a low amount of testosterone circulating in the bloodstream, this, there is still a high amount of binding between the receptor and the hormone because there's just so many receptors. So that's an interesting hypothesis as well. Now, having a greater concentration of a specific anabolic hormone does not necessarily mean you will experience greater hypertrophy. This is another misconception. Okay, Unless, though, there is uh, an unless here, exogenously administered in supra-physiological doses. So essentially what this means is that unless you inject anabolic steroids or you use exogenous anabolic steroids, the differences, the variance in hormone concentration, if you are in that normal range, may have minimal effect on hypertrophy. So this is what the graph is shown here on, on the right-hand side. With testosterone, and with pretty much all hormones, we have a high range, a normal range, and a low range. Now, most of us sit in that normal range. Okay, If we're eating um, nutritious foods, okay, if we're maintaining a, an adequate diet, if we're exercising, if we're sleeping well, we're not consuming too much alcohol, then we're going to be sitting in that normal range. Now, where you are in that normal range is what will not uh, impact hypertrophy to a great degree. So if you're sitting close to the top of that normal range, you may experience the same hypertrophic potential as someone at the bottom end of that normal range. There may be some differences, but they aren't major differences. And we can't say they are major differences because we don't have the evidence to allow us to say that. 
okay? Now, the thing is, if you're in the low range, because you're not sleeping, you're drinking alcohol, your nutrition is inadequate, um, and all these other things are going on, you will experience less hypertrophy. You will not experience the same amount of hypertrophy via testosterone than you would if you were in that normal range, okay? So when you dip into that low range, there are differences for sure. Now, the thing is, when you get into that high range, the question is, if you get into that high range, which you can only do if you are using supraphysiological doses of anabolic steroids, so if you are exogenously using anabolic steroids, then you will also experience significant amounts of hypertrophy, a lot more than being in that normal range. Okay, so the point of this slide, however, is that testosterone-mediated hypertrophy will not be very different if you lie in that normal range. So if you go from mid-range to high range, but you're still in that normal range, the likelihood of you experiencing much more hypertrophy will be quite low. This goes for females too. Okay, females still produce testosterone. Females who have PCOS, um, they actually produce quite a large amount of testosterone. Still not as much as males, but they do produce more testosterone, which may lead to them being able to build more muscle. Many Olympic athletes actually have, female Olympic athletes actually have PCOS. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is Martin from JPS Health and Fitness, and today you watched a hormones and hypertrophy lecture from the fundamental series in our all new education portal. This portal is a hub for all fitness enthusiasts that want to learn more about training and nutrition. If you want to know more about the portal, see the link below and stay tuned for next week's video.